They've got everything uh, you need for your linen closet at Bull and Branch. Hey, Nikki. Start over. Yeah? Hey, Thomas Nikki. Lennon? This is tough for me because I come from a long line uh-huh. of sheep selling middlemen. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. um, like, when well, I hear, I love hearing about this wonderful company yeah, and I'm how sure you do. they've got these great sheets, but. Keep in mind, there are middlemen out there yeah. mm-hmm. who are trying to jack up the prices on your sheets. Well, they need to find new work. Oh, my God. This attitude, yeah. I feel like, is pervasive in America now. <laughs> we used to be a country of middle yeah. people, <laughs> not just men. We've got two middles across the <laughs> Hi, Nikki. The yeah. partition from us. Andrew Collins here. Uh, Mike Racine is here. I, and now- I don't have times. time to meet everybody, guys. <laughs> Thomas Lennon is here. You know him from Reno 911. He is now the author of the the young adult book, Ronan Boyle and the we Bridge say, of Riddles. We can say hit. Hit. We can say hit. Hit book. Um, I cannot believe right now, you wrote right now a on, children's book. I know, book. right? Who does that? You. I know. What is going on, man? Like, you are dude, so prolific. Take a day off, guy. Uh, you know. also have a series, Teachers, on TV Land every Tuesday at 10 p.m. This guy is everywhere. Thomas Lennon, one of the funniest mm-hmm. people that oh, thanks, I- exists. It's nice to see you. Last I time can't I saw believe you, we I'm were... friends with you. I know, it was weird. Last time I saw you, we were together <laughs> on like one of those game shows that you have to sit at for like nine hours oh, straight. so many And it hours. seems like it's going to be fun. And you're like, and they throw <laughs> a ton of money at you. And like, this is going to be great. And like, hey, meet Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar right. doesn't say shit to you all day. And it's <laughs> really weird. Not a word. Was he mad at me? What <laughs> happened? We talked, I, and yeah. He was mad at me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it, it was, was like, you. It was just like the vodka. Kareem's vibe was so chilly. It was I thought not... we were going to goof around. Listen, no. that taping uh-uh. hasn't aired yet. Right, right, right. That we day did a... was a little bit like trying. Yes, we did a you, game me, show. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> Who else was on it? uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and uh, Vivica Fox. Yes, that's right. That's right. And then you and me. The classic foursome. (laughs) Oh, my God. Getting the gang back together. (laughs) Everyone wanted it. And then right before we shoot the game show, the set caught on fire. Oh, yes. So, like, nothing happened for, like, five hours. And then there was a weird um, uh, weird. beeping going on in my trailer that you came. I came and fixed your trailer. Yeah, I was just. Which is kind of how porno movies start. (laughs) (laughs) Like, hey, Nikki. Um, that was so nice of you. I just remember being in my trailer. There's this like piercing, uh, like beeping going yeah, on. Yeah, I'm a and Midwestern I just, guy. I was just meditating, like oh, I guess I'm just gonna have it was to deal a, with this. And then Tom, it was Tom's a carbon monoxide in. warning. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was just slowly and what, dying. The great thing is, I came in and I turned off the thing that was warning you, assuming that you would just fall down <laughs> dead at some point. <laughs> it was so. I either fun. I either saved your life or quietly killed you. You do a lot of those shows, though, right? Like, we, we I, I've done a lot of those game shows. Enough. Enough. That you look at the run. I didn't know who was going to be there until I got there, and I was hoping for, like, a good God, cast, I, like a fun. God, I thought I was going to pal around with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Did I was like, you? what if he and I, like, get a Vespa with a sidecar, and, like, <laughs> we're going to have some times, me and Kirk. And then he came in, and I'm like, hmm. Hello. I just helped him with his marker Hello. a lot. And he was so serious when it came to playing the game. Oh. What like, kind of game was this? It's, it's called to tell the truth yeah. or something. So oh. yeah, it's three yeah. people um, <laughs> telling. Uh, one, two of them are lying, but they all say that uh, like I'm an alligator wrangler. I'm, I'm an, an alligator, alligator wrangler. wrangler. <laughs> I'm, an al- I'm an alligator <laughs> wrangler. wrangler. And then you have to guess which. And then you ask some questions. I think you're all lying. To figure and they out all look like alligator wranglers. <laughs> they do. Yeah. You convince. Uh, I, we were both bad at I the game. I was really really bad at it. We yeah. kept losing. Yeah. It's a hard game. Yeah. But um, it was... It was fun to hang out with you for like it, nine hours, though. <laughs> it was so yeah. long. And it was so cold Being, in there. Well, you were also basically nude. Which yeah, was that's your, true. That was on you. That was on me. Yeah. That was on my stylist. You know, sometimes you just... They don't really know what the vibe of the show is. You were, and wearing, they dress- like, you were wearing jeans <laughs> and like a tiny bit of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it, I mean, it so worked. So slutty. Yeah. I, I just, sometimes, I just, you know, you go into hey, these styling it's, sessions. It's show business. Exactly. Sometimes just go in and win. Just, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what happens all the time with me with these stylists is I go in for these fittings. Tell me and about it. I know, it's like my life. They'll put on, like, <laughs> I'll put on a bra and they're mm. like, that's honey, it. Honey. That's the look. Oh my God. Bra. I'm dead. Duct tape. And then I convince myself that's all I need to wear is a bra because in the fitting, it Twizzlers, looks... bra, <laughs> glitter, sprinkles. And then, oh man, that mist. was a... Mist. Cream Sierra cheese. Mist. 
But I was so um, excited to be with you on that show because um, I had worked with you before on At Midnight. You were an executive producer mm-hmm. on At Midnight. What we, a fun show that was. We competed on that show, I think. And you, we did a couple I'm times. I'm sure you beat me a couple times. I yeah. think I did, but you were also I really I used to lose that show a lot. At that show, mm, not, too. Well, you weren't? I was there a lot. You were there yeah, a lot. Yeah, which if that counts as good, I don't I know if that counts so. as Just, good. I think so. Just participating. I participated. You won the participation. I got most participation. <laughs> You were there a lot. Yeah. That was such a fun show at midnight. And yeah. um, and that was the first time that I had worked alongside you, mm-hmm. having been a fan of yours for so many years. So it just like blew my mind that I got to even in meet you. Um, I, of course, know you from your character, uh, Lieutenant Dangle, mm-hmm. uh, from the Reno 911 series and movie. Um, that's uh, an under- weirdly, that's an underrated movie. It's yeah. so funny. I went and saw it in the theaters, Crestwood Mall. Boy, I thought that was movie was going to do better. Yeah? Yeah. Tell me about that. You know how every time you're like always stylist or always like, just wear a bra. Yeah. My life is, I thought that movie was going to do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, so what mm-hmm. does that feel like? Because you've had your when hands movie- in a lot of movies. I yeah. mean, you, you've written a lot of you write hits, a lot of I got of some, hits, some hits and some faults. Tell us the also, movies Andrew's that you've a dog written. walker, so. Yeah. <laughs> I was. It, uh, it's You're been three walker. weeks post. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know how you feel. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. movies have you written? Uh, you want, I'll go like <laughs> yeah, biggest let's go hit, biggest flop. <laughs> biggest hit would be like Night at the Museum with Ben Grant. Amazing. Damn. Uh, biggest flop would probably be Taxi with Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> mm. uh, you wrote Taxi? Yeah. <laughs> I've never even seen Taxi, but of course we all know about it. Pacifier with Vin Diesel. I mean, uh, this that's guy. That's huge. Herbie fully loaded. Uh, Hell baby. Um, oh man, there's a did lot. Did anyone? Did you guys know that Thomas Lennon wrote these movies? Yeah, I've no. been tattooed on my back. No, no, you don't. Yeah. His IMDb. Show you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. No, we don't need uh, to But my IMDb goes so far as it's all mostly <laughs> butt crack. Um, <laughs> Everything I did in the '90s is just crack. What does that feel like when you <laughs> when feel like flops? a movie is gonna be? Yeah, when something flops, when well, it doesn't go the, the way. Well, I know the Reno 911 was interesting because. It opened like I think today it would be like it made ten million dollars or something like that. Yeah, and I was like, and it only it cost ten million dollars. <laughs> so, okay, so that's a- yeah, it was like a moderate. It ended up making money on like video and stuff like that. But we got called like you get a call Monday from the head of the studio, and I remember we got a call from the head of the studio at Fox, and he's like, "Boy, I, I really thought this was gonna do better, guys." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh yeah, us too." And he's like, "That's okay. I mean, we're friends now and everything, but yeah, <laughs> no, it's it sucks. It's like they kind of like it's like a minor breakup." Yeah. When do you get the numbers in? It's, uh, let's say they, it's released on Friday, right? Generally, so. they can tell them they can track a movie. Here's what's weird: they can track a movie the Wednesday before it comes out, kind of. Because, um, like, for real flops that we've had, like Taxi, we got a call. The producer called us to say he was leaving town like Thursday night before it was even coming out, <laughs> and he was like, uh, "Hey, we're all going to be radioactive for a little while." Yeah, and then he like left the country on his jet. <laughs> but was so, Taxi was Taxi a bad movie or people just didn't both, really see all it? of the above? Yeah. It was both a bad movie that no one saw. So it's, it's not, your, a perfect that's not storm. your fault though. Well, uh, kind of. He did write it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but once you, mm-hmm. but the thing is that most people don't know is that you write a mm-hmm. script and then it, it it's no longer yours unless no, no, you're no, an, no. A, a producer on uh, well, it. Well, unless you're doing like art house movies that you pay for. Yeah. Yeah. If you're so, doing big studio movies, they're gonna. They're gonna chime in. Was that sure. a was that a rude awakening for you as a um, screenwriter when your first movie kind of got out of your hands and you were like, "What is happening now?" What? You know, it was weird. Here was the the first movie we wrote was called um, "Let's Go to Prison," based on a book called "You Are Going to Prison" that Bob Odenkirk directed, and we actually saw a cut of it that we really loved, and then the studio took the movie away from Bob, and they were like, "It was doing okay," and they're like, "Let's make it really upbeat and cheerful." So there's like a whole new ending. And the first time I saw the movie with its new everything was in the movie theater. And oh I brought like 20 people to see it. And I was like, this thing sucks. Damn. I'm sorry. And then we all went to Buca de Beppo. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that, so that, that can All happen. I can say is when you have a real, real disaster, go to Buca de Beppo afterwards. Just go to Beppo. <laughs> You're going to feel better. Get the lemon chicken. <laughs> try to sit in the Pope room, you know. Yeah. Well, you... It takes it takes a sting off of epic failure. What is the most obnoxious thing about this business? About the movie business? Yeah, about just the business in general. Like, is there's one thing you could change about it? Like, is there something that the have you just like accepted just everything? Don't take it personally. It's have not you done personal. that at times? Oh sure. You, if, if, as soon as you can get over taking everything personally, Ben and I actually wrote. So I have a book out now. This is not my first book, but our, our the first book I ever wrote was. Uh, called Writing Movies for Fun and Profit. That's right. And fun yes. and is crossed out. So <laughs> it's actually called Writing Movies for Profit. Um, and the big thing that we say is like once you can get over 
how bad your feelings are going to be hurt, like most of the time. Yeah. You can, you'll get through it. Yeah. But you got to get ready to be like, yeah. Pretty. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. It's going to sting. Yeah. It's not for everybody. It isn't. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah. it gets easier once you have faced rejection and the criticism. Well, this is a big conversation I had with one of my best friends, Ken Marino. Uh, I said, you got to be really careful as an actor and as a comedian and uh, that because you're used to so much disappointment that at a certain point you've gotten so good at being numb to it yeah. that you also don't experience the, any happy parts of the good part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to be really careful about that because you'll get so good at just being like, mm, mm, I don't care. I don't care. I didn't care anyway. That's yeah. a really good point. You gotta be I, careful. I so, read yeah. something. Um, I read. I bought one of those books. You know, that's on the racks at um, Hudson News, where it's just like generic titles. Like, is it like how you're gonna do something? Mental like, toughness. Hardy books? Right. Like mm -hmm. it was called Mental Toughness, and it was just mm -hmm. a bunch of different articles about it. And one that I read that really resonated with me, and um, is that athletes that are like the elite athletes when they suffer so they have the olympics to look forward to every four years right mm -hmm. and in between that is all these world championships and if they in world championships mean a lot to them now if they lose at a world championship and they let that defeat really get to them then they aren't going to be ready to start training for the olympics which is still on their plate coming up in a couple of years anyway so they've learned to not to, to take a hit and to be like that hurt, that sucks, but not to wallow in it because otherwise you'll lose out on training. But also, they talk a lot about about uh, about how they celebrate their wins. They really go hard and like it, because I I think to your point, yeah. we don't let in the happiness either. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you can't get like so good at being numb to stuff that you don't. know. How do you celebrate? I don't. Are you really. gonna celebrate the release of this book, Ronan Boyle, Bridge and the Bridge of Riddles? It's a hit right now. It's um number one in children's Europe books really? on Amazon, by the way. I'm crushing the uh, Who Was Princess Diana book. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's the number two spot. I'm the number one spot. In, in I mean, the that was UK? My, my lifelong That's goal huge. was there'll be a children's book explaining yeah. Princess Diana to children, <laughs> and I will crush it with my might. What, uh, how do you are you so good mm -hmm. at so many things? I, how did you write? When when did you get into children's literature? When did you go? I'm going to take a stab at that. Well, I mean, you've written movies for for the same kind of age. Right. Group. This is and it's more sort of like young adult. Actually, like yeah. a funny adult could read it too. Yeah. Um. So it's it's really for like like high school kids who are funny or grown ups who like funny stuff. So it's not great. Yeah. Um. And the answer is I'm right compulsively. So I'm always doing something. But. Uh, yeah. You write compulsively? I do. Yeah. I'm like you wake a, up every morning and write, or what's your yeah, what's your writing? Yeah, or I'll write late. Yeah, sometimes. And is it therapeutic for you? Do you feel like if you don't, you what I'll is the desire? If I don't do it, I'll be sad. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Has it always been that way for you with for writing? For a long, long time. As soon as I got in the state and I realized you had to write to like be in the show and survive, it started to become like a little bit of a compulsion. Yeah, well, it's yeah. worked out. Um, this is uh, we're gonna actually have um, our resident lisper mm -hmm. read. Oh. Uh, Andrew has a lisp, and we're gonna we picked a very mm -hmm. lispy part of your book read. for him to read. Let's do it. Would you Would you mind? Yeah. Um, Andrew, <laughs> no, I didn't know this was okay. No, you didn't know this was gonna happen. No. But just start. Um, now everyone in the book has Irish accents, also. So <laughs> I hope I hope you've been working dar, on it. Dar, dar, dar. That's it. There Wait, it what was that? Uh, <laughs> dar, dar, dar. This is Ronan Boyle. <laughs> Bridge and the, and the bridge, bridge of, of riddles. riddles. Where am I going? Oh, n oi, knobster. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's going great so far. Said a scratchy voice. Three seniors were scrolling down at me. The leader of the group was Big Jimmy Givens, the sw sweatiest person I have ever met. Honestly, I have no idea why his nickname isn't Sweaty Jimmy. Because he's not even that big. His sweatiness <laughs> and his nastiness are his most defining traits. Stove cots <laughs> are ain't for knobsters, you daft knobs noobster. Noobster? How did I if not you know? You need someone for the audible <laughs> version of, all, of this. I, I read the audible version, but that's because I didn't know Andrew was available. <laughs> you could have so got me so cheap. Next time, just check the avails. By the way, they didn't pay me much for it either, so before, yeah. <laughs> Can I keep reading? No, no. like to myself. Oh, yourself. Yes, You'll yes, keep reading yes, yourself. Yes. I'll let you know yeah. when I <laughs> That's your copy. <laughs> Ronan Boyle and the Bridge of Riddles is uh, a new book by Thomas Lennon. Uh, funny for that you said for high school kids and adults to enjoy. Yeah, equally. I think uh, like 
I Patton gives a quote on the back of the book, which is Andrew. Will you read Andrew? Patton's yeah, quote? please of course. read qu- Patton. <laughs> Ronan Boyle, which is you. That's uh, the book. Yeah, yeah, or the book. <laughs> yeah. I'm just fucking. No, Ronan Boyle. Is on me. It's uh, <laughs> Ronan Boyle and the Bridge of Riddles is a touching, funny read for smart kids, young and old. Flat out laughed out loud. Yeah. Patton Oswalt. There you go. And then Weird Al. Yeah, yeah. In my completely unbiased opinion, my good friend Thomas Lennon <laughs> mm-hmm. has written perhaps the most finest children's book of all time mm-hmm. in the ever burgeoning leprechaun crime drama subgenre. <laughs> 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 Equal parts J.K. Rowling and Douglas Adams, which, you know, ain't a bad thing. Weird Al. Oh, that's yeah, right? great. I know. Um, and you have a th- your more books are to come, right? This is the first of three. Uh, uh, yep. Featuring Ronan yep. uh, mm-hmm. Boyle. Yep. Oh, that's so exciting. Second so get, one I just finished. Um, this is a great birthday gift, a great um, what holiday is coming up? St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day gift <laughs> what? for what your was kid. That? What don't holiday is coming up? I mean, like, do you get St. Patrick's Day gifts? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> of course you do. Okay. Well, now you do. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, Thomas Lennon, there's really no he's one of the funniest people yeah. uh, i've i can imagine and uh th- like you are seriously one of your my favorites oh, i watch thanks, your Nikki. stuff all the time i've been a fan for so long and um i'm really excited about your books and i'm excited for kids to i i we need more funny literature and oh, um thanks. for for young adults and this is it ronan oh. boyle and the bridge of riddles get it order it on amazon i'm uh, guessing it's yeah, where it, you, also, where's the best place to, to get it if you get it at barnes and noble there's a special edition that has it comes with the trainees manual in the back so i would get that one but oh get that one uh obviously get it wherever you like but there and uh, nikki had only one other question which is when is this going to be on uh, <laughs> three weeks <laughs> three weeks from now yeah great <laughs> cool uh, wait, do we have to go to break? Do we, did I get anything? Good. We have more time. Okay, good. Oh, oh, I want to ask. We're going to drag those, the <laughs> sheet metal men through the garbage again. <laughs> sheet metal men. How do you feel men. about Warby Parker? You hate them? <laughs> the glasses people? Yeah. My, I used to know people that would sell, my family used to sell expensive glasses <laughs> yeah. that you didn't want with mm-hmm. prescriptions that weren't that great. So as long as they're not against that. Right. Uh, I'll be should be fine with Warby Parker, I think. I think we should uh, move on. In frames and styles um, that you, you like do Tom's? not want. Do you like Tom's shoes? <laughs> I'm going to fangirl out a little bit and ask you about your character, Lieutenant Dangle, mm-hmm. from Reno 911. Yeah, sure. Can we talk about the shorts and how those came to be? The way the shorts came to be is, I was like, this guy should have shorts. And then the costume designer brought in like a normal pair of khakis. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 I don't think you understand. I was like, <laughs> I want it to be just like so weird. Like weird that you can't look away. Yeah. So I ended up, I, the only reason I found out, how, I just went smaller and smaller and smaller. And then yeah. the reason I found out how big they actually are was because in the movie, the Reno 9 movie, you see me making a pair. Like yeah, in an emergency, yeah. I make a pair of the pants. So they're actually from the waistband to the, to the hem is 11 inches. So wow. it's, a, it's a really small short. Really small short. Yeah. Were those uncomfortable? Oh, it hurt like hell for years. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I mean, it was horrible. What would you wear yeah. underneath that? Just a pair of but like briefs? briefs? Regular briefs. But sometimes, well, since we're getting into it, Nikki, yeah. sometimes I'd, they gave me smooth briefs mm-hmm. so you wouldn't get a bunch of crinkly lines and such. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You've got stylists. You know all about I know this. exactly. It makes yeah. me feel good that you as a man have experienced you don't the, want the weird tightness lines. and yeah. all the stuff that... Y- yeah. I mean, wearing... I was um I got to portray uh, Kurt Cobain on a show that's coming out on Netflix where I just I dressed like a boy on TV and it was the greatest time I've I'm ever had on TV. i to see that. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's called historical roast. It's where uh, comedians dress as dead celebrities and roast each other oh in my heaven. God. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> but I didn't know I was. I thought I was going to play Princess Diana. That's mm-hmm. what it was originally pitched to me. So mm-hmm. I got to set being like, "I'm ready." And mm-hmm. then they were like, "You're yeah, Kurt Cobain." You mm-hmm. And it was. I was scared because I've Who never. Who are you roasting with? Uh, is it, Jeff Ross. Jeff I'm Ross. Sure is, he's part of the it. producer yeah. of it. Yeah. Jeff got me into the Friars Club in 1996. Really? So, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been a Friar since the 90s. Do you go there a lot? I was there on Friday. What? Yeah. I know. What do you do there? Have soup. <laughs> 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 but like, I pay like thousands of dollars a year to get to go there and have the soup. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's this it's worth well it. worth it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what if, like, literally, nothing what happens, happens in there? Literally nothing. Nothing. No, but you did go shop. there on Friday. I, I do. I, every time, because I, I live in L.A., but I'm a member of the Friars Club New York, so whenever I'm in town, I feel this obligation, like, I gotta go to the Friars Club. But what, you just show up, or do you tell them you're gonna no, come? No, you tell them you're coming and make a big deal, and then you're like, yeah. Is there a show that goes on there every no. night? No. It's just a bunch There's of people soup. sitting around. There's older, do you like older people? Yeah. Do you like soup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like, I'm trying to think of what else is there. You got me. Pictures. <laughs> so there's a lot of pictures uh, of like Trump on the wall and like Harvey Weinstein. So my joke from the back in the day. Oh right. So my right. joke is that we have more predators on the wall at the Friars Club than at the National Geographic Society. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, they all hung out there too. Yeah. It's a boys' club, they, right? Used to be. Gloria Allred was the first one to be like, "Girls deserve to be in here." Right, and then they were like, "We don't need to be here." Yeah, I'm yeah. just like soup and old men. <laughs> soup. Uh, I'm good. Soup and farts. I feel good. Uh, yeah, Gloria Allred was the first person. I ran into her at another place that reminds me of the Friars Club. Mm -hmm. I ran into her at the Magic Castle. Oh yeah, old timey soupy place. Mm -hmm. Such an old man <laughs> soup place. Mm -hmm. And I saw her. You know, she she was also in the Michael Jackson documentary. As she, I mean, she's the one. I haven't that, seen it yet. Oh I yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but. Right. He... He's weird, yeah. <laughs> it's no. a little weird. Oh, he's cooler than no, 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 Okay, no. cool. Yeah, yeah, it it eat up. soup, okay. though. It's weird. Oh, he's the totally soup cool. is weird. Yeah, okay. the soup is weird. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I was so I wanted to like walk up to her and be like, "Thank you for all you do for women uh -huh. and victims." And I, w but she was having dinner with like her nephew or something, and I didn't want to bother her. But my friend was like, "You have to," and so he pulled. Of course, a man <laughs> pulled me over. <laughs> Turn was like, "She loves you," and she goes, "Here's my card, honey. If you ever need anything." And then. Uh, uh, and she was like, what do you do, honey? Like, kind of getting yeah. it out of the way. And I was like, I'm a comedian. She's like, you know you can go to the Friars Club now because of me. And I was like, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. thank you. I'm thank still you. not in, actually. Uh, Thomas, can you get me in? Oh, of course. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, oh, again. Wait, this just in. If it's a Warby Parker. <laughs> it's not Warby Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Lennon was our guest. Thank you so much for being here. Again, his book, Ronan Boyle and the Bridge of Riddles, is available everywhere now. Get it at Barnes & Noble for a special edition of the book. Order this for whatever teen you have in your life who is interested in comedy, who is interested in um, magic, leprechauns, mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. I mean... Tom, there's no one funnier Irish than things. Thomas Lennon, and now he is writing uh, young adult fiction, and um, and I'm excited for for uh, kids to get a chance to read this. Ronan Boyle and the Bridge of Riddles. Be the cool aunt or uncle in your um, niece or nephew's life, and and pick up this book for them for whatever uh, occasion they have coming up. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. That's right well, this, again. And by the way. My last question: When is this going to be on? Four uh, weeks now. Four weeks. <laughs> yeah, from now. it just moved. It's getting further <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah, it's bad. That's really yeah, weird. Yeah, we did the math. We got stacked behind something else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yikes! Are we behind the Jenny McCarthy show uh, now? I didn't want to <laughs> tell you. <laughs> God, I'm so jealous of her. She wears glasses, sunglasses, in all her interviews. Because, like, I, as a woman, uh -huh. that's a that's a that's a dream. Strong. It's, uh -huh. a, a it's a aging woman. All I want to do mm -hmm. is like cancel out my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Lennon, thank you so Nikki, much for being here. Always a pleasure. You're the best. You're the best. Uh, guys, when you're selling online, getting your orders out the door quickly can be tough. That's why you need ShipStation.com. It's the fast and easy way to manage and ship your orders. All from one place, ShipStation helps you get orders out quickly and keep customers happy. Nikki, I'm sorry, but my family <laughs> my family's oh, been no. in the business of shipping things from a bunch of different places right. at a bunch of inconvenient times. Well, I hate to tell you this, their but schedule. your family needs to look into a different business this because ShipStation is really... what we do. <laughs> oh, God. Do you... What are... If that's the disgusting habit you do, like out in public, like what are you doing in private? Sometimes I'll fart in my hand and smell my own hand and smell my own fart. You ever do that? I honestly think that you're being serious right now. I am being serious. Why would I lie? Why would I, you do that? I don't know. Sometimes you just want the smell of your own scent. Do um do you get a lot of feedback on the show about me being mean to you? Yeah. Um, do people think I bully you? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that because you've never really let me know. I've had I've had you say it to people in front of me, like, yeah, some people say that Nikki bullies me, and that's the first time I hear it. What and about I don't know just why now they... when you did that? 
I don't, I don't know what they could be talking about when... I honestly don't know what they're talking about when... when Because sometimes you'll tell me, like, hey, Nikki, like, so my brother thinks th that you will, you bully me sometimes and you make fun of me. Uh huh. And I don't even understand what they mean. I think it could be your voice, what you just did. You can do it again? <laughs> what was that? Oh, no. Sassafras. Yeah, that thing. Well, say the word sassafras and let's see if I'm really that far off. I'm pretty sure you're bullying me right now. Sassafras. Don't try to be funny. Fine, sassafras. <laughs> South of France? <laughs> say, I had some sassafras. Um, uh, From a suck of dash. I had some s s sassafras and succotash in the south of France. Do it. <laughs> I had some... S Wait, do it again one more time? Let's uh, go have some sassafras and succotash in the south of France. Let's go have some sassafras and succotash in the south of France. Not bad. What's the scariest <laughs> thing for you on a plane? Um, sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm not right. <laughs> Wait a second. What do you hate more than anything when you fly? Truly. <laughs> Sitting next to me? Is Turbul it really that bad? Turbulence. No, what is it? When Turbulence. Is it? Try to say it right. Turbulence. Turbulence. <laughs> is that food in my teeth? Is that the problem? Turbulence. 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 There we go. Yeah, okay. There we go. We got there. We got there. Um, what about <laughs> if you were in a plane crash and survived, what would they send to come get you to take you to the hospital? After the turbulence. Oh, an ambulance. Huh? Ambulance. How do you say it? Ambulance. 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 There you go. See, I mean, you, you like try so hard with words. It's like. What did you say today that was just so not right? You said it yesterday, and you tried to, like, get through, and you tried to, oh, there was some word that... Accessible. The, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, wait a second. So what do you want your comedy to be to people? Accessible. What? Accessible. Okay, you said accessible. So you want people to be able to assess it mm -hmm. and to, like, give notes on it? No, I want Or do you want people to, it to be able to reach people? More relatable. Okay, so what's the word? Accessible. 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 Spell it. A C C E S S A B L E. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. I think it's an I at the end. Where? Somewhere. <laughs> Does this count as bullying? Just making you say words? No. Yeah, I think. What could I do to make it count as bullying? Because. Yeah, I think it is bullying. I think to the outside people, I think they don't. They don't. Like my mom doesn't appreciate it. Oh, your mom doesn't. Mm. Tell me. Tell me. Mm. So your mom listens, and she's like... No, my mom doesn't you. like the comments that you leave on my Instagram. Oh, really? <laughs> uh-huh. Like, which ones really got her upset the most? Probably the one where you called her a fat whore. I did not <laughs> Yeah, do you that. did. I, would, I DM'd you Oh, that. that was DM. That was a DM. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that, by the way. So your mom is not a fan of how no, I no, you? No, no. My mom is a huge fan of yours, and she thinks that you've helped me a shit ton. Mm -hmm. But then she also doesn't understand why you're so mean to me. <laughs> But doesn't she understand that that's part of why yes. you're successful? Yeah. It's because I am mean to you. Well, I don't know if that's part of it. I don't know that it is either. I think that's what bullies say. So that I think you just gaslighted me. I did. Yeah. I think you enjoy it. I do. <laughs> Cheers.